Good afternoon to you. Good. Young people should have the spirit. So I want you to get into the spirit. I know a lot has been said. I mean, the distinguished speakers before me, and even the one that is coming after me, we continue to tell you those things that are important to giving you the tools to ensure that the socioeconomic transformation of Sierra Leone is here. I am here to speak to you about a boring topic, corruption. Most young people do not really engage with it. Most people prefer for it to be discussed in the abstract. But I'm here to bring it to you so you can feel it around you. You can recognize it. I want you to connect every one of us with what is happening in the fight against corruption. I am grateful that the president appointed a young person like you to lead the fight against corruption. And uh, as you all are aware, a lot has been done and will continue to be done in that regard. So, the topic itself says the Sierra Leone anti-corruption revolution, the role of young people in building a sustained culture of integrity and transparency. You see, we belong to a generation that has to take on a challenge to ensure that the story of Sierra Leone is different. I am sure all of you have grown in societies where our ability to access a life of dignity is challenged. In a society where inequality is entrenched, access to the resources are selective, they are concentrated in more places than others, and sometimes the citizens have to juggle around to access them. And with this juggling comes opportunity. You want to become a lawyer, but you are born in a village where there is not even a chair to sit on to learn the ABC. What are your chances of becoming a lawyer at the end of the day? You go to school and most times you are hungry. There is no food to eat. What is your capacity to concentrate and take it? These are the reasons why we have to understand, all of us, you young people here, you have to understand. The country has enormous resources for us to be able to take care of ourselves and even distribute to our neighbors. But do you know why the inequality that I have just described to you exists? Do you know? You don't? It's corruption. The individual has been more important to all of us than the collective. So, one man is giving money to construct roads in Port Loco. He prefers to build mansions for himself. Why is the streets of Port Loco? are not paid. One man is giving money to build schools in Port Loco. He prefers to build hotels, live a life of luxury, whilst the children of Port Loco cannot access good schools. <laughs> and when I say Port Loco, I am not only saying it is Port Loco. This is what is happening everywhere. Just replace Kenema with Port Loco, or Kailahu with Port Loco, or Makeni with Port Loco, or Cambia with Port Loco. Our stories are the same. Because the individual is more important than the collective. And in a society where the individual is more important than the collective, that is where corruption lives. So you go to schools that don't have the necessary equipment and resources because one man stole them. But when your parents want to pay for your school fees, they come to the same man and beg him for money to pay. And he gladly does. Thinking he's the, he's the biggest philanthropist on earth. 
This is what corruption does to us. In this country, we have more resources than we can imagine. We have every mineral that other countries can only imagine of. They, they, they cannot. They can't think. I was in some countries. The only resources they have is sand. Sand. We have everything: gold, diamond, platinum. All of them you can think of. Some of them we have not cobalt. Everything you can think of is under the soil. When it comes to vegetation, to growing food. In Port Loco here, I am sure those of you who eat for tapia, if you throw it at the back of your house, when you go back there, you will let it grow. Not so. Imagine if you can now actually make a farm for Botapia. But don't blame yourselves. We have grown in a society that has not given us the opportunity. We do not have the examples we can point to. To make us want to aspire to be better citizens. People put their interests above the collective interest. We are struggling for electricity. When people are going to the moon and coming back in the 21st century, we are still worrying about electricity. So young people, this is your reality. This is our reality. But you see, all hope is not lost. In all of you seated here and beyond, there is hope. All you need to do is to believe that there can be a better today, not even tomorrow, and walk towards it. You just need to push yourselves to understand that those people who perpetrate us in the way we find ourselves. Do so because if things are organized, they will not be able to carry out their enterprise. There is something we call the chaos theory. Do you know why, when, for example, we are in here now, if there is a problem and the police want to attack us, do you know why they would send in tear gas first? Do you know? To cause commotion. And when the place is in that way, they can be able to do whatever they want to do to us. Similarly, if people are in a room and they want to do things that other people will not suspect them of doing, when we were younger, we used to go to the, to the clubs, for example. If boys and sometimes girls want to do things that other people do not approve of, what do they do first? They put off the light. Not so. Don't you people still do it in schools? They put off the light. Because when it is dark, you can do a lot of things and get away with it. What we have to do as citizens is to make sure that there is light. But we are sitting in darkness now in the 21st century in Sierra Leone. Because Light is what will make them not to be able to do the things that they have been doing for all so long. You as young people have to understand these things and the things they use to create darkness are there. They dangle it in your face. For example, they use tribalism, regionalism, a man is giving money to make a road. He does not make the road. The road is still there. The project papers are there. They show that he was given $2 million to make this road. The road is there. It is everything but a road that is there. He is called to give answers. First of all, did you receive money? Yes, I received money. Well, you were supposed to make the road between here and Lokomasawa. Not so, yes. Is it there? Well, the road is there. Is it tired? No, it's not tired. Where, where, where is the money? Instead, he's ready to come back to us, the young people, and tell us it is because of his tribe. It's because of where he comes from. And this goes across every tribe, every region. 
He will use everything to create smoke, to create darkness. And then the real truth will still remain at the end of the day. Where is the money that was given to you to build a hospital? Children die. These days, social media is awash with all kinds of campaigns for young people to be taken overseas for medical treatment. Even as I was seated there, once one was ordered to me. The young man, vibrant young man, has a back problem. There is no money. In the 21st century, we don't have a hospital to correct a simple back pain. Yet, we want to use the things that divide us to create a cloud. So, the Syrian anti-corruption revolution is predicated on this. We are challenging everybody. It does not matter where you come from. It does not matter what language you speak. It does not matter where you are. It does not matter at all who you are. The question we have is, when you are in public service or in a position of trust, you have to live a life of responsibility and answer for those things that are entrusted to you. We all have to understand this and we have to know that even as young people we have to change these dynamics. We have to first of all reject these isms. We have to reject the politics of region. We have to reject the, policy, the politics of tribe. We have to be more Sierra So When I was coming in just now, as I was standing out there, my friends from Far Bay College, we all were there and we were, they were making Something which reminded me of our days in college said, Are we all generals? Yes, sir. Wonderful. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, can we say this now together? Are we all Sierraleans? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Wonderful. If we put in the same energy that we put in when we say these things that divide us. When we call ourselves the political parties that we belong to, when we call ourselves the regions and tribes that we come from, when we call ourselves the clubs that we belong to, which are beautiful and amazing things, but if we redirect that energy more towards being Sierra Leoneans as young people, nobody can fool us. So are we all Sierra Leoneans? Yes, we are. Amazing. Amazing. So, as young people, this is what I want you to do. As we move on from this, let us be people who have embraced the fight against corruption. Let us understand that when we fight corruption conscientiously, the benefit is for all of us. There is no street in Port Loco which has been well developed. And there is a gate that says somebody from this region cannot pass for this street. There is no street that is developed in any part in Sierra Leone, take Kenema, where there is a bridge or a barrier that says if you come from Putloko or the north, you cannot pass there. There is certainly no hospital anywhere that has been well built and developed that there is somebody taking a register of the tribes and regions that people come from before they enter. There is no school. I am very sure in my mind that there is no school. All of you in schools, you can recall that you were in schools with people from different tribes, different regions, different belongings. Yet, you competed fairly together. We were in university with people from all regions. As I came in here, I saw many people who were in college together, many people who will continue to fraternize together. These are the things that unite us. But you see, the greatest thing we have to unite behind is the fight against corruption. Because it is the very fight for the soul and survival of the country. If more revenue is generated and it does not go in the pockets of individuals, it can only be used for the good of the country. To ensure that you can stay in Port Loco and have a good school to attend 
and sit through your exam to become a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer. You don't have to run away at all. You can stay in any part of Sierra Leone and have access to the same amenities if we all have enough in the common pot for us to distribute amongst, amongst ourselves without the individual hijacking it on every step of the way. So young people of Bodloka, I challenge you. I challenge you that for us to achieve the objective of a socio-economic transformation of Sierra Leone, you have to pledge to yourself these things I'm about to tell you now. One, do not yourself be corrupt. What you ask for of other people, particularly when you look at people of the older generation and refer to them as being corrupt, these are all corrupt people. You have to make sure that you yourself are not corrupt. You are an example so that your younger ones coming after you can have a model to follow. You have to be patriotic. Patriotism does not have to be described for you. It's love for country and living it. Most of us have traveled. We've gone to other countries. We see that the changes that have taken place in these countries were done by people who took up the challenge for their country. By ensuring that they do not do the things that undermine the fabric of their country. And corruption is one thing that undermines the fabric of our country. So a patriotic Sierra Leonean will do everything in his power not to be corrupt. As citizens, we have to reject corruption in all its shapes and forms. Do not say because it is my uncle who is engaging in it. It is fine, but you are ready to cry down other people's uncles. Do not say, because it is my tribe, it is fine. Because it is my party, it is fine. Then you lose the moral high ground to confront other people. As young people, we have to understand these things. You see, we should also lead campaigns as young people that can create the environment for the culture of corruption to be driven out. For example, let us advocate so that people are paid better. There are many advocacies going around, but you see, people are always advocating around the same issues that every other person is advocating around, so much so that nobody wants to hear it anymore. But as young people, devise yourselves well. Engage on issues. Better pay in public service, for example, is very important because if your parents have school fees to pay and their pay is not enough to take care of the fees, to take care of their homes and everything, that is the urge for them to be corrupt. Because they don't want to be embarrassed to you when you come and say, Daddy, uh, school fees in school, and he says, I don't have it. So let us advocate. It is not right. It is not okay. It is not even good for us to say, because you are poor, you should be corrupt. No. But we can do something about it. And it is for you people to rally around causes that promote these kinds of things. You see, we should continue to live our lives as emblems of, of integrity. We should explore innovative ways to deal with corruption. Are you not the generation of technology? Is that not what we call ourselves? We have all the mobile phones, we have WhatsApp, we have the cameras, laptops. People can do a lot of things. Young people can sit down and do a lot of things with technology these days. It was not so probably 10, 15, 20 years ago. Let us use those energies that we have to create systems that can help the country. For example, if you have ideas that can change the economy of Sierra Leone from a cash-based system to a cashless society, you will have done a lot of things. So, for example, at the National Revenue Authority, they put money in bags and take it home. But if you can create a, an app so that so, nobody gives anybody money anymore, they just sit down at their homes and they make such payments and it goes straight into their account. All they need to take to the officer is the receipt. The officer will have no opportunity to steal billions. Don't you see the press releases we put out? Do you see the monies that people steal? Those are monies. One man 
can steal 5 billion. At NRA, for example, we are doing an investigation into airport tax. tax. Within one year, two or three people stole 36 billion euros. Yes. One of them is building three houses at the same time. Three houses at the same time. It's a young man like you and me. And these are the realities that we see when we fight corruption. But that same kind of man is capable of coming back to say it is because he is a Mende man and Ben Kaifala is not Mende. That is why Ben Kaifala does not like him. And the same goes vice versa. We have to understand these things as young people that we have to explore innovative methods of transactions so that corruption can be reduced. The strength of fighting corruption is prevention. We have to prevent. Also, as young people, you have to be willing to report corruption. Nobody has ever been a hero by doing nothing. Nobody. Even when Rosa Parks sat down in the bus, by sitting down, she was doing something. And that is how she became a hero. I'm encouraging all you young people to understand that there are enormous opportunities up there to report corruption. When you see something, you should say something. I am encouraging all of you to live a life that is devoid of corruption. I know it is difficult. I know we come from backgrounds where our models are corrupt. There are times when you are you are the most effective person, they provoke you. In schools, those teachers who always come to class, how do they call them? Jesus never failed. In fact, when those teachers come to class on time always, some students just get angry at them for nothing. Ah, oh, but this is my this is my answer. Wait till they come for now. They prefer the teachers that do not come to class. But those teachers that do not come to class but receive salary at the end of the day are corrupt. So you see how simple things can be that? We have to understand these things. And we have to know that the teacher who comes to class on time is paid to do his job. When he comes there, he is doing you good. And those are the people who should be our heroes in society. We have to change our mindset. We have to understand that it is in our hearts that the transformation has to happen. That is why I am very grateful that this conversation is taking place in the land of Baibure. A man who I have enormous respect for. Probably the greatest reunion who ever lived. A man who never had the letters that we have. He, does not, he did not speak the English that I'm speaking. He did not have multiple master's degrees like I have. He never went to school in England or America like I did. Certainly, he never had the education, even at the level that most of you are. But he was capable of knowing injustice and doing something about it. He was capable of understanding taxation and rallying his people to rise against it. We all see corruption every day. We know it, we know those who engage in it. Let us have the mind. You see, what Bible left us was a message painfully etched on the scrolls of his heart to all of us to say, you have to leave. You have to live for what you believe in, even if the heavens may fall. Baibura is the greatest hero, and I'm glad we in Put Loco are always celebrating him. You see, I now conclude by telling you, there is a watershed moment in history. We should either get it right and prosper as a country, or get it wrong and fail as a people. Together we can win. We should forget the things that divide us and walk towards our collective destiny. Every generation has its defining moment. This is ours. Let us put on 
our girdles. Let us prepare ourselves as young people to face the world, believing and understanding that together we can wipe out corruption. I thank you all.